Hello, everybody. Thank you all for joining me for today's webinar. My name is Ben Cron. I'm an engineer with Arup. I'm not a full-time software developer, but I've been involved with the development of several of the tools that we're going to be discussing in today's session. I understand we had uh, one or two issues with our registration system for today's uh, webinar. So thank you all for, for bearing with us with that. Today, we're going to be focusing on pre and post processing pedestrian impact tools. There are quite a lot of tools within the OASIS software that are applicable for pedestrian impact workflows. And today's session is going to focus on those tools that we can find in Primer uh, and that have a very specific pedestrian impact focus. So they're, they're very much tailored for, for pedestrian. Hopefully you can all see my screen and, and, and hear me. Uh, I've got a, a model open that we're going to be using for the duration of, of, of today's session. It's a, a freely available uh, model from, from the NHTSA website. And I've cut it down to make a, a pedestrian impact uh, book. The first tool that I want to discuss today is not, uh, it's not actually solely focused on pedestrian impact. It's, it's, uh, we can find it in the measurement tools. So if I go to measure, we have our uh, well-known tools for, for measuring things, node to node, point to point. And then for a few versions of uh, Primer, we've had this distance plotter tool. And this is useful for creating contour plots. So for example, I might want to measure the distance from my bonnet to my hard points. So I could start by measuring from the bonnet and measuring to some of these under bonnet hard points, such as the engine, this brace, the shock towers, And when I do this, I'm measuring along a, a vector. So at the moment, the vector is in the negative Z. So we can see that with this blue arrow here. If I wanted to change that, I've got some options here. I could rotate it around a, a given axis. So if I rotate it about the Y axis, and this is aligned with uh, the line of flight from one of our child or adult impactors, let's say. And we press calculate. And Prime is now measuring along that vector to our hard points. And we get this contour plot. And th this on its own is, is quite useful. It's a, it's a nice way to present certain measurement data. But uh, in, in terms of pedestrian, and in this case, head impact, we've also got this option down at the bottom here, clearance. And that's for inputting a, a keep out zone. So often uh, when people are working with pedestrian head impact, we'll have a, a keep out zone where we try to, to, to make sure that there's nothing hard underneath the, the bonnet that may uh, inhibit the, the, the deflection of the bonnet when it's struck by one of the head forms. So let's say, for example, we have a 100 mil keep out zone. We, we type that into there. And it looks like nothing, nothing changed. Nothing did change as far as these colors. But what we've got in our uh, contour bar here is that the, we've, we've subtracted 100 from, from those. So that means if we change our max value to be zero, then we can start to see where under our bonnet we've begun to eat into our keep out zone. And we can toggle some of these colors to, to tidy the plot up a little bit. So that creates one of these soup plots. I've, I've heard them described as uh, showing where we are um, exceeding our keep outs. And as soon as we put in one of these clearances, this display as area button becomes active. And this is useful from a, a head impact uh, perspective because it allows us to uh, give a prediction as to the, the performance of the, the, the bonnet and the head impact as a system um, for, for, for this given hard point uh, clearance. So if we if we click that, we get a, a little pop-up and that's, uh, it asks for a distance. So enter affected zone distance. And this is the uh, the, the, the neighboring um, regions to these hard points that are going to be affected by the hard points. So we might put in something like a half head form and primer has a think and we get a plot like this. So this is uh, akin to the, uh, the the legal regulation for, for head impact where we have a, a high and low hick area. And what primer is sketching here is the, the red is uh, determined via the, the keep out zone. So anything that's red, we've got a hard point in our keep out zone. 
anything that's orange is then that radius from uh, our our keep out zone so that that zone distance the affected zone distance we typed in and then our contour bars change now so we get these percentage areas so if our bonnet was the entire uh, head impact zone then at the moment we we're seeing here that there's a 20% uh, high hick prediction for for those so it's that's just based on the, the clearances uh, the idea here is that it allows engineers to very quickly assess package, assess style, without having to ever run any uh, impacts themselves. It's a, a very conceptual tool. It, it, it relies on the FE, so it's measuring from, from nodes and elements, but the the shape of those elements or the quality of those elements is not actually uh, important. So we could uh, we could take in uh, cat data throw a, a really quick uh, mesh on it and not worry too much about the quality just carry it into primer and, and, and do something like uh, what we've got on the screen here so that's the, the the first tool i wanted to show you it's not uh, entirely specific to pedestrian but it does have a very specific pedestrian little add-on and that's the the distance plotter tool the, the rest of today, though, is going to focus on uh, three different tools that we find in our safety menu. So if we go up to the, the, the tools buttons up in the top right here, so we have safety. And down here, we've got pedestrian. And we have three tools that we're going to discuss today. We've got pedestrian markup, multiple model build, and HIC area calculator. So starting with, with markup then, we get this, this pop-up. and this, this this tool is all about uh, inspecting the geometry of our of our vehicle and creating a, a, a markup for for the pedestrian head impact or leg impact uh, of course so first of all we we work through this panel from from top to bottom and the first thing we need to input is is the parts that we're going to be interacting with as far as this markup is concerned so it's the red button here and I'm going to select the parts that are on the, the, the outside of my, my vehicle. So my, my bumper skin, for example, my headlamps, this grill, my bonnet, the fenders, and then working backwards, I'll take the pillars, my windscreen. In this particular model, I don't need to have a, the, 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 there isn't a leaf screen for me to select here, but if I did have a, a leaf screen in, in there, I, I'd, I'd select that at this point. Any, uh, you know, any vents or anything in the bonnet, I'd, I'd select those. But once everything's selected, we press apply. That button turns green. I could sketch these just to verify my selection if I wanted to, uh, but otherwise that's, that's the first input taken care of. The next one here is the ground coordinates or the Z coordinates. And if I sketch that, I can see that at the moment it's at zero, which for this model is okay. And that's a relative to the to, to, to this setting the, the, the ground Z coordinate, it's worth mentioning that this particular tool, this markup tool, uh, relies on the model being oriented in the way I've got at the moment. So that is the uh, Z is the, the, the vertical axis, Y is the cross car axis, and then X is the longitudinal. And our vehicle is facing, uh, you know, the front is at the, the, the sort of uh, lower, the, 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 the negative or the, the lower X coordinate. And then as we move rearwards, we're increasing our X coordinate. So the, that orientation of vehicle is, is, is required for this tool. That's something bearing in mind if you have a different system for your models. Once we've input our parts, the rest of the panel becomes active and we can start to, to select things here as well. So the first thing we, we do next is uh, we identify our protocol. So there's a number of Marco protocols that have been input into this tool. So we've got various consumer regulations. So we've got different Euro NCAP versions. We've got CNCAP and then we've got the legal GTR regulation at the bottom there. I leave it as the, the 8.2 version for, for your NCAP at the moment. And we've got uh, a bunch of inputs that are required for the different uh, zoning calculations. So the, the bonnet leading edge line, the, the side reference line, wraparound distances. But those from our parts that we've input, Prime has been able to determine the, the info that was necessary for those. So those have all gone green. Some of these red buttons though, they, they require a little bit of extra attention. So the first of those is for the bumper ref reference line. 
and we need to identify our bumper part. So this could be one or more parts for our, our bumper skin to see external parts. Uh, in this model, I've just got this, this single part here, so I can select that. And then adjacent to that, we've got the bumper beam. So this is for the, the, the width of the test zone for, for lower leg. And if we select our bumper beam, so that's hidden behind those, then we can give that as well. So that's the bumper reference lines taken care of. Now we have the, the bonnet rear reference line. So for that, we've got a couple of inputs as well. Get this little pop up here. The first of all, we need to identify the bonnet part. So we can choose that one there. And next is the windscreen. For this model, my windscreen is broken up into two separate parts, which we'll come back to why I've done that later. Press apply. The other inputs here, uh, things like this one at left Y coordinate, you know, we, we could input that ourselves by picking nodes or typing in coordinates, or, or Primer can find that with our part selection. So I press apply, and these are now all, all green. We could change some of these things if we wanted to. So for example, the, the wraparound distances, we could type in different numbers for those if we wanted to, to, to deviate from the protocols. There's, uh, the, there is, uh, the, the tools are available to, to, to tailor all of these things, whether it's wraparound distances, the, the planes, the angles that are used to determine these lines. So we've got full control over the calculation. I leave these as they are. We've got some options down here. So we've got our inputs in the top half of this panel, and then we've got some options. First of all is this tick box here for reflecting elements. So the markup is going to be done on one half of the vehicle, but this little tick box will reflect it so we get a complete markup. We can see the process on the screen with this little tick box, but uh, that takes some time, so I'm not going to do that today. And then we can automatically write out some of these, the, the outputs of this as a keyword file if we if we wanted to as well. I, I want to leave those as they are. And lastly, we've got the save and read settings. So if you wanted to do this multiple times or you want to save your own sets of wraparound distances and angles and things, you could do that by saving a settings file here and then just reading that in. And then the selections that we've made so far in terms of the parts and things, that would all be read in for us to save us a, a click or two. Once we're happy with all of this, we press apply. And primer is now working through the, the markup that they're based on the, the URN cap reg uh, and our selection. And when it's finished, we'll be able to see that on the, the screen as a, as a separate model. So it's just having a think and we'll get two models. We'll get one model that contains beam elements that, which show the markup. So those are the, the blue lines that we can now see on the screen. And if I just move that out of the way, so model one was my starting model, and we've now got four, which is those beam elements, if I just toggle that on and off. And model five is for our sort of, uh, for, for checking, for our understanding, it shows all the working, it shows all the, the working uh, processes there. So the different angles, the planes on the front, the wraparound distances, the zoning, the, the uh, impactor at the back for marking that rear reference line. So we can check that. So if we didn't like the look of some of these, these feature lines, when uh, different different parts of the geometry have been picked up, we could inspect that and, and, and understand why that's that's the case. And it's it's worth pointing out that the the markup that we get here, you know, it, it's based on the, the FE. It's based on the elements. It's not based on the CAD. So it's not going to be as accurate as what you can get from the CAD or from the clay from the studio, but. The the idea behind this tool is that it allows our engineers the um, the ability to start at the pedestrian impact analyses much earlier in the in, in the program. They can they can very quickly start start running some analyses as soon as they have some CAD data for these components. They don't have to wait for the markups, and and when they do get the the official markup from the the, the CAD or from the studio, you know we we would expect this to be sort of right within a, a couple of millimeters. So the, there's not going to be a significant change to the the impact points that you'd be running in the meantime. So this is the, the, the markup, we can see it here. So we've got the, the different zones for the head and the, the leg. And our panel on the, the, the floating panel here, we've, we've gone from our marking tab into the impact points tab. So now that we've got our markup zones determined, we can 
start to, 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 to view the, the impact points that we're going to be testing. So we've got uh, options here for head, upper leg to bonnet, upper leg to bumper and lower leg, and we can sketch those. So those are my head points at the moment. Uh, for example, if I wanted to look at the, the upper leg, we can see those. So those are on that reference line there. We will, for this example, we'll stick to head. So those are our, our points and we've got a couple of options so we can we can define a distance between these these points. So that's the, the sort of end cap method, the grid method, 100 mil, uh, but we can have a, a n number of points or a, a matrix n times n or we can have nothing at all at this point and we can just do a, a lot of these selections uh, manually which we'll see in a, a moment how we would do that as well. I'm going to leave it as this defined distance for the protocol and if we zoom in a little bit we can see that each one of these has a has a name. Hopefully, that's coming through over the over the internet. So we've got this uh, naming convention that's uh, as as prescribed by the protocols as well. Uh, there is options for for those in that drop down there. Underneath the the naming option, so that's the the label setting. Now we've also got this default green option, and this is for uh, for the the windscreen. And if uh, your impact points lie on uh, the windscreen and are a certain distance away from from hard points like the pillars and, and the IP. Then they they are they're assumed to be sort of default green in in your NCAP speak, and you don't need to test those. So we could, if we've already assessed our windscreen and our hard points, and when we've broken our windscreen part to be in two halves, like I've got here, a, a green part and a red part, then I can select that green part, and and then they go green. So we see that here, the little blobs there, they're, they're, they're green so those won't be output as as uh, impacts that we're going to analyze we've got a couple of other options here though for for additional creating additional points that we might want to to analyze we can create them manually with this first button so i can pick on my bonnet a couple of extra points there and there for example and those will be put into the to the, the the family of points that I've got from my my protocol. So those are the blue points there. We've also got a, a nice tool. I'm just going to unsketch those to to make it a little bit easier. We've got a nice tool here, hard points, that allows us to add extra points that we uh, think might be needed for understanding the the, the behaviour of the head form with respect to some of the hard points underneath our bonnet. So for this one, we would select our hard points. So I, I click the little button, we get our pop-up here. And a bit like what we, we did earlier with the measurement tool, we select our underbonnet hard points. For this example, I'm just going to take the ends of this brace. And so I'll select those two. And we can manually select some of these hard points, or we can have primer auto detect the, the worst case points. Uh, the, the detection is a couple of parameters here, which we could leave as, as defaults. That's just how primer measures down from our bonnet uh, to these hard points. But the, the, the bottom input here is, is useful as the number of points we're going to uh, determine. So we've, we've got uh, two here at the moment. I've just changed that. And then if I press auto detect, Primer has found the, the minimum clearance to these two parts and it's giving it's given me an extra point on either side that's aiming at, at those specific parts. And also from this panel we can make a, a similar contour plot to what we had earlier, just showing these these clearances. So we get it in this little contour bar here to, to, to flag those up. Once we're done with that, we press finish and we've got our extra two points there and they, they go in with all of the, uh, the other points that we've, we've got also. Thirdly, we've got this robustness points button and this is for creating a, a little rosary around our impact points for, for robustness. So if we feel like we're on a bit of a knife edge, we might want to do some tests close to these impact points just to understand that. And we can do that using this method here. So we can choose to have four or eight points around our, our impacts and we can choose all points or manual and hard. So all would be uh, quite expensive uh, computationally. So I'm just going to choose manual and hard. So for this example, um, to, to reduce the number of points, press create, and then we can see that manual points at the back, the hard points, uh, so the manual ones at the front, uh, hard points at the back, and we get this little ring around them uh, in green. So that's the four, four points, and they're 10 millimeters away from our central point. So that's the robustness points as well. 
the fourth of those buttons in, in a row there in the middle of the, the, the GUI is this write boundaries. And that allows us to uh, output as either a keyword or IGIS or CSV, these individual uh, boundary lines. And the, the, we get at one file per boundary. So we get one file for each wraparound line. We get one line, one file for each reference line, side reference, front uh, leading edge, for example, uh, bumper reference line. So you get one file for each of those. And that allows you to share this information with your, your colleagues. The, the bottom part of this panel is to do with building the model and, and creating uh, these runs for, for Dyna. It's split into two halves, the adult and the child. Uh, for this, I'm just going to do the adult for, for, for time. Uh, we'll just work through the adult. We give it an angle. So that'll be minus 65. And then we have to identify some impact parameters. So the first of those is the impactor itself. So if I choose my impactor, I then need to choose whether I'm orienting it via nodes or coordinates. So a coordinate system. So I've got some nodes that I, I know the IDs for here and a contact. And what this is for is Prime is going to position our head form uh, on the on the surface of our bonnet, ready for these different impact points. And it does so via odd, orienting the, the impact using these nodes and using the co contact for to, to avoid any, any crossed edges, and any penetrations. Once I've input this, I save this as a, a template header file. So I would go into my, uh, so this is my working area called PED head. And then I type in here, say adult header.csv. I can save that file and we'll see, we'll take a look at that in a moment once that's saved. Then the next thing we've got here, we've got some run parameters. We This is for post-processing. We can ignore this for, for the time being. Um, if we, we're not uh, too concerned about the post-processing just yet. Uh, and when, then what we do is we, we, we save uh, the full uh, template. So we'll look at what the difference between the full template and the header is in a moment. So I'll call this one adult build.csv. And then I will write that. So if I go into my folder here, you can see I've got these two uh, CSV files. So I just open up the header. And what we can see here is it's a text file. It contains the impactor directory. It contains those node IDs and the contact ID. And other, otherwise, that's that's all it contains. If we look at the build CSV, the second file I created, it's got the same header. It's also containing the model path. And it's got all of our impact points, for, specifically for the adult, because we, we, we've only output for the adult. And these comments here, those are the default greens. So they, those are commented out with the dollar sign. This is our, this is our list of, of impact points. So if I close that, go back into Primer. And at this point, we could press Build. So I pressed Write to get that CSV file output. I could press Build. And then Build would create these. However, uh, I'm going to pause. Well, I'm going to stop this tool from here. So I'm going to quit that. And uh, my models are still read in. I'll get rid of both of those now just to tidy this up. And so we've got our model here. And now, Rather than build from that panel, I'm going to show you the, the other way to build it. Uh, they're, they're both very similar. This gives us a little bit more control. So if we go into uh, pedestrian and multiple model build. So if we'd press build from the other panel, Primer would have went away and, and built LS Dyna models for all of those impact points. And that would have took too long for this webinar. So if we go into this panel, this multiple model build panel, I can read that CSV that I've just saved. So there's my adult build CSV. I can read that in. And the the inputs here have been, uh, they've started to be filled in, but nothing's active at this in this panel until I press make. And by pressing make, Prime is reading in the, the model in the impactor. So there's there's our impactor down, down there. And you can see these have now become active. I could change those if I wanted to. So these are just the inputs here. So for depenetration, I'm going to use this contact, and the method of depenetration is in the x-axis. So my the the process goes that the, the head form is moved to my bonnet. They'll be to the impact point on the bonnet. The 
impactor is then moved out of the bonnet to avoid a crossed edge and a penetration, and it's done so in the X axis. We could change that to be X and Z or X, Y and Z. I'll just leave that as X for this example. We've got some other inputs here. Uh, vertical and boundary SPCs, those are not so useful for pedestrians. So this, this tool is, is for other model builds as well. Down at the bottom though, uh, we've also got this offset. So this is good for active or deployable bonnets if you want a, a gap between your, your impactor and your bonnet for some free flight or, or to move your bonnet, then you can, you can input that in, in there. And then there's also this uh, projection method for, for pet head. And this is a, an older option for the, the times when you would be targeting a hard point underneath the bonnet. So your, your impact point as far as the XYZ target is concerned is, is underneath the bonnet. So this projects the, the impact point back up to the bonnet and, and, and then the, the, the tool works from, from that projected point. All of our points are already on our A surface, so we don't need to worry about that. We can see them all with this edit load case button here. So this is a list uh, straight from that CSV. They're all, all listed there. Uh, the default greens are not listed. We can sketch them on our bonnet there. So we get the both sides going up the A posts, but none of the, the default greens are present because they were commented out. And for this example, I'm not going to build for all of these. It's, it's a little bit too many. It doesn't take too long, but uh, we, we've only got so much time to, today to discuss this. So I'm, I'm just deleting some of these points and I'll save a couple here. So if I just um, we sketch those, we can see I've got a couple at the, towards the back of my bonnet there. So A80, A8 minus one. So I return to the main panel. So I've just got two to build. And what I'll do now is if uh, I'll just rotate this so we can see what's happening a little bit easier. The last thing we need to input down at the bottom here, we've got some inputs in terms of how these are written out, whether we use a standard style set and the naming convention uh, and the, the, the file structure. There's a there's an alternative styles, uh, GM and case, which you can find a little bit more about in the in the manual. Case is a relatively new one, so I'm using Oasis 16 or Primer 16, which is our newest version. This uses star case to, to submit all of the different impact points. The, the one thing I need to do down at the bottom here uh, for, for these outputs is to identify my my output directory. So I, I'm, I'm quite happy with this uh, Accord Pethead directory, so I'll just leave that as it is. That's where my master model lives, so that's this directory here. With all of that, I press apply. And Prime is now building those two models. So it's put the head, head impactor there, dragged it out, and then that's the second one. So it's inside and then it drags it out again. Uh, very quick for, for just the two of those. If I go back into my directory here, I can see I've now got two folders, one per impact point, and inside here is the keyword, and the, the structure of this is that it's a, it's, a, it's a master file that has two includes. One include is to my master model, and then the other include is to my impactor, uh, and Prime is creating the, the difference between one model and the next is this transformation, the star defined transformation, and that's moving the impactor into these different positions. So I've got those two that I've just made there. If we'd run this for, for, for the entire sweep, for adults and child, I'd have a whole bunch of analyses all listed down here that I would then be submitting to LS Diner. There's different ways to, to submit, whether you're using the Oasis system or you have your own system. But uh, the, 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 at this point, we'd, we'd, we'd run these models and we'd post-process the analyses. I'm not going to go into too much detail on post-processing. For in within Oasis, we've got uh, fast TCF, which is a scripting language for THIS. That's uh, ideal for, for very quickly outputting the HICS, the head, in, head injury criteria for each of these impact points. And then we've also got Reporter, which can collate uh, all of these individual results into one, uh, one, one, one sort of document, uh, something like this, for example. This actually comes with Reporter. So this is a, an example where you've right, we run uh, half a dozen or so points and the report is showing this on this little graphic here. So you can see we've got some yellow points and green points, total score. Uh, th this is for NCAP, of course. And then scrolling down, we've got the individual hit curves. So report is a very powerful tool for creating very nice graphics like, like this and an automated report generation. Once we've output 
uh, all of these these results we can create one of these files. So it's this, this file here, this dot blob file. And if we look at what they look like in a text editor, you can see it's very simple. It's it's a data, this is an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a Z coordinate, and then a HIC. So X, Y, Z, and HIC. It's a space separated, but it, we can also have a CSV version of this. So it's very easy to create this from a, an Excel spreadsheet that you probably have anyway as part of your, your workflow. And the the reason for creating this file is that it leads us into our next tool. So if I close our model build tool now, I'll just delete that model. So I'm back back here, and if we look at our safety menu, pedestrian, we've got this HIC area calculator. So that's the third tool I want to discuss today, the final tool, and the, the first thing we do here is we read in a data file, and that data file is our blob file. So that's the one we've just been looking at. And we get something like this. And each one of these points, colored in, in green or yellow or red, that's a that's a, a, a an impact that we've we've analyzed. And primer is drawing this line around them, this perimeter, and we can we can tune that. So it's a little bit tight at the moment. We can slacken that off to get something a little bit more smooth around the edges. If we had our own perimeter that we wanted to read, we can read that in there, and it's just a series of x, y, and z coordinates. So very straightforward. Once we've got once we've got this uh, this file read into to Primer, we can start to, to view some of the, the, the results. So we've, we're showing it in, in a color form here, uh, but we can also show the, the values with this little drop down. So this, this panel is, is broken up into a few different um, regions, if you like, a few different uh, groupings. The, the top is the, the perimeter that we've just seen. Uh, and then next we've got these display options. So we can we can toggle those points on and off. We can toggle the perimeter on and off. Uh, and then also we can toggle whether we show a value. So those are the, the values. So these are our hicks for these different these different points. And so you can see we've got these little clusters. Those are our little rosaries that we made at the front and, and the back. We, we can also show names here. So we don't have any in this example, but if we wanted to have a, a name, we could have a, a name as well as in our in our .blob file. So that would be X, Y, Z, HIC, followed by name as, a, as an optional input on the end, which is, is sometimes useful. And this is, we can create a, a blob plot for, 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 for these uh, on our on our bonnet. So we can see it, you know, there's, there's over there, there, so we can we can make some pictures uh, and show these these values. That on its own is 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 a nice to, to thing to do, but there are more tools here that we can we can start to use. So underneath the the display options, we've got some calculation parameters. So we've got two regulations we can consider. We've got the legal, the GTR, and we've got the the consumer URN cap version eight. So if we change to version eight, for example, we can see the the colors here have changed to reflect the scoring. So it's not a particular good result. This one we've only got one green in the middle, and the uh, the the, the the contour bar here is showing us our our hick range, and it's also giving us our scores. So we've got one point from green, six from yellow, lots from orange, and then a, a normalized score of 10.3. So that's giving us our urine cap score. And we can we can uh, we can start to play with with some of this data and and assess the the effects of these things as well so for example down here in analysis tools we've got some options for 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 tuning these these things uh, we can we, if we click this band sensitivity button we give it a 50 so we give it a hic value at the the default is 50 and then what primer will do is it will identify which of these points are close to changing banding. So if I zoom in here, we've got this orange point with a yellow ring around it. So that means that it's close to turning yellow. It's close to getting uh, the, the, the next band down. Uh, over here though, we've got the opposite. So we've got a yellow point that's close to turning orange. So this is a, is a very quick way of identifying points that are on the cusp of becoming worse or, or, or better in terms of the, the Higgs score. 
we can we can change these settings if we wanted to. So this is the the NCAP settings, but we, we could change some of those these values typing in here, different different numbers if we wanted to. So some of these I, I think I had already changed. Um but we could we could have different values in here and the scores we can recalculate those uh, as appropriate. So if you've got your own uh, settings for for your own um, uh, businesses, your, your different OEMs will have different internal targets for these. You can type those in there, and then the save button will remember them. So this gets saved to your OA preference file, so you don't have to read those in time and time again. We've also got uh, the GTR reg, and that gives us some extra tools actually. So if I turn the GTR reg back on, so that's what we get for to start with in terms of our coloring. If I click this calculate area button, rather than calculating points, which is, is relatively straightforward, we are calculating our area of high and low hick. So this goes back to uh, what we were seeing uh, similar plots for with that measurement tool. And once we've once Prime has thought about that, we get this this plot here. So we can see that we've got this this high and, and low hick. The the low is green, the the high hick is is orange, and that, so that's between 1,000 hicks. So anything less than 1,000 is determined to be green, and anything between 1,000 and 1,700 is orange. Greater than 1,700 would be would be not allowed. So that's that's the red zone there. And this is actually a two-dimensional calculation. So if I spin that round, we can see that this is projected onto this ground plane. For our, uh, the, the calculation may be two dimensional, but for our uh, reporting and things, we might want to project that up onto our A surface. So there's this little projection button here under display options, which allows us to select some of these uh, panels to project up to. So that means that we can make a nicer, nicer pictures for our reports. When we are showing the area, we can, uh, toggle certain things as well so we can uh, we've already seen we can turn those things on and off the the input points the big blobs but we can change the the style of, of coloring here as well so we've got this uh banded output as we, we call it here we can we can change that to be uh this this contour plot so we see these uh based on the the the, the, the coloring here is now based on the contour on the left which is our hick values we can we can change those the top and bottom the max and min we can just type over those so we could change that to be zero let's say and uh, 2000 if we wanted to and get uh, whoops something like like that uh, we can reset those back to the, the default with the, the max and min button here we can also output this this contour information and that can be output as a csv file or a dot blob file and the, the, the reason for using the dot blob is you can read that into d3 plot so what's actually gone on when we do this calculation then if I zoom in a little bit, we'll see that what looks as if it's a, a continuous coloring is actually a series of smaller dots. So we've got our, our larger, darker dots, which are the, the impact points. And then these small dots, those are interpolated values. And the, the grid size for those is determined with this number here, so 10. And making that very small doesn't necessarily improve the accuracy of this calculation. We, we find that for, for a grid of impact points at 100 mil, uh, sort of a, a 10, 10 intermediate points between those is, 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 is a good value. So that's why the default there is 10. And primer is is interpolating the value for the small dots based on on the the neighbors of the the impact points the large dots and from from those small dots we get our impact percentage areas so that's down at the bottom of our contour bar over here so we can see calculated area 79.6 percent input point 75.5 percent so the calculated area is based on the the small dots the interpolated values and the input points is based on just the ratio of the impact of the large dots, the, the impact points to the, 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 the green, the ratio of green to total. So that can be a little bit misleading in terms of an area calculation when you have robustness. So we've got some extra points here that are all clouded into this, this orange zone, likewise over here with the green. So they can skew sort of the ratio of just the impact points. And then also the, the, the points that are in the middle of the bonnet are contributing more to the area than let's say the points down here on the perimeter. 
so the the calculated area is a is a more accurate measure and that's been signed off by different uh, different OEMs have, have, have used this method of calculating area and had it signed off so it's a, it's an acceptable uh, way of calculating area this 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 method in in primer when we are when we are working with these area, we've got a couple of extra tools that we can use. So we, we had the band sensitivity earlier for NCAP, that's applicable here too. But we've also got this area sensitivity. And this is, is quite a powerful little tool, this one. Because what it does is we, we click it and we give it a Hick Delta, a bit like the band sensitivity. But what's what happens here is what Prime is going to do is, is take each individual impact point so those diner analyses, and it's going to subtract 50 hick from each one of those individually. And it'll, it'll have subtracted it from the first point and recalculate the area. And then it will subtract it from the second point and recalculate the area. Uh, when it does the second point, it resets the first point. So it doesn't just keep taking 50 from each different point. It, it, it only does them one point at a time. And what that allows us to do is we can plot Rather than plotting HIC here, we can plot the sensitivity of the HIC area to these impact points. So what we see here is that we're quite sensitive to the points down in this bottom right corner, over here, and then at the at the back. And and that um, you know that that tallies up with what we see in terms of the orange, of course. But there's some unexpected um, results here. For example, if I show the value. This point down here on this, this corner is at 1020, 1020. Our low hick zone is at 1000. So we would only need to reduce this by 20 hick to turn this point from, from yellow to green, from high hick to low hick. And sometimes people get hung up on, on trying to, to change these points. But actually, what we see is that we'd, we'd be better off from an area point of view targeting the point over here, which is at 1,100. So if we subtracted 50 hick from this, it'll still be yellow, but the contribution to the area is greatest. So this tool here, it really allows us to, if we've only got so much time and resource to target different zones on our bonnet, we, we can we can be a little bit smarter about how we go about that and not just take the low hanging fruit because the low hanging fruit might not actually help our our total area. We've also got, uh, in terms of changing these values, we can do it manually if we wanted to play with some of these. So this point here, we, we saw that was a, a, a good candidate for improvement. We can click this edit individual point, click that. So it's at 1100 now. If we change that to be, say, 1050, press OK. Then we can see the calculation is updated. The contour plot is updated. And we can do that all over. We could do that for the NCAP as well. We could do it for the for the GTR. So it's applicable for both. So we can just type in different numbers there. So that gives us a, a sort of what if scenario. If we've identified one of these areas as being of, of interest and we've gone away and, and did some, some modeling uh, to try and improve it, and we haven't run a, a full sweep uh, to improve these things. We've just run a, a collection of points in the area of interest. We might want to combine that new set of data with our full sweep. And we can do that with the combine input data button here. So if we click this, we can identify a a smaller file so I've got another blob plot here so you can see this experiment dot blob if I read that in we can see then that this is just a small set of points around this cluster here that I've been trying to improve and I've managed to get these 1500s down to 900 to 1000 some are still high 1200 there but the, we can see that the, the, the values are changing and if we're happy with that, we can we can click yes. The tolerance here is just determining whether we're going to overwrite an old point, an old value, which is the green dots here, or if we'd, we we might have run extra points and then those would be added. We're going to overwrite those, so we press yes. We can recalculate the perimeter if we wanted to. Our points went on the perimeter, so I don't need to do that. Primer is recalculating, and we now have an updated plot with that extra with those extra input points uh, so we've managed to to reduce this so we've got some extra greens there and then the the area has gone up so we were at 79 or 78 before now we're at 80 percent so we've combined our study set of results with our full sweep 
our baseline. And we can save that. So this write combined data that allows us to, to write this blob plot file uh, in its in its entirety based on uh, on these two models brought together. Lastly, in terms of these analysis tools, there's a little target percentage area, and what that would do is if you you, you type in a, a a new percentage area here, so we're at 80 now. If we wanted to say go to 85, compress that, and that tells us that we would need to, to deviate from our 1000 target to 1060 to achieve, yet, to achieve that. So this target percentage area, whether you set the target area to be greater or lower, it allows you to understand how close you are given your, your current target to sort of achieving that, that uh, with your current um, low HIC value here to, to achieving that target. And then the, the last thing I want to show you with this is, is this button up at the top here. And this is for reading in a second file. So sometimes it's good to compare these two models. So if we, we hit our, um, our, our our vehicle, we might have two models side by side. So if we click read second file, we get this little pop-up. You can press continue for that. And then we would read in. So we get it's a, another instance of this this panel. We can read in our file. And then the two are actually on top of one another at the moment. But what we can do is we can offset with this Y offset here, our second model over over there. And we've got so this, we've got this set of inputs here, and then the one over there. And then we can we can inspect left to right the the changes as we are working with different different sets of results. Okay, so that's the end of the tools I wanted to show you. So just to recap, we today we looked at measuring in the distance plotter tool. So there's a little add-on there for measuring keep out zones and the effect that they may have on our percentage area, high and low HIC. We looked in pedestrian tools and looked at the markup for very quickly generating a impact zones to, to get a head start while we wait for the, the data from the, the studio. Once we've got our zones, we can build our model with multiple model build, get our diner analyses going. Once we've got our results back, we can use our HIC area calculator to view them, make some pictures, overlay them with our models, and then to start to, to deep dive some of those uh, more complex interactions that affect our, our area calculation. So that's that's it for today. Uh, hopefully you found it uh, interesting and, and useful. I'm going to have a quick look at the, the questions now. If there have been any, um, I can try to answer those. So let me just take a look. A couple of the comments here. We've got no questions today. The the, the connection apparently for some of our uh, listeners has been quite poor. I'm not sure why that is. I've got a, a wired connection here today. It seems okay for for me. If uh, we get feedback that, <coughs> excuse me, this was a uh, not really very uh, good connection for anyone, then we can try to to rerun this webinar. Um, if you you do have any questions or problems using these tools in in future, then I'd encourage you to to contact our email address diner.support at arup.com, and then we can do our best to address those. That's it for today. Thank you for your for your time. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, hopefully, see you soon.